Good morning, everyone. Today you'll be given an overview of the Agricultural Incentive Program by members of staff from the Ministry mm -hmm. of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. Today we have Lizanne Williams, Florencia Beckles Gangaram, Hansley Dubal, and Keisha Robinson. Today's session will be interactive, so feel free to ask questions at any time. Thank you. Okay. Hi, good morning. I am Ms. Lazan Williams from the Regional Agriculture, the Regional Administration South. And today I'll be doing a presentation on the Agricultural Incentive Program. At this time, I want to say welcome to all of the existing farmers, all of the new farmers, and all of our young budding farmers. So with that said, let's get into it. The Agricultural Incentive Program of Trinidad and Tobago. So what is the Agricultural Incentive Program? The Agricultural Incentive Program is a national policy that was designed to drive the development and facilitate increased agricultural production in Trinidad and Tobago. What is the aim of the AIP? The AIP aims to act as a catalyst for the development of the agriculture sector while complementing the strategic plan of the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries. We can further say that the aim of the AIP is to reduce, to help to reduce the, fit in, the food input bill, to increase agricultural, our agricultural contribution to the, the reduction of the GDP, generating employment and promoting business development in agro-processing. What are the objectives of the AIP? The objectives of the AIP are to sustain the, re the relative reduction of production costs for key commodities as informed by the national policies, subsidies, subsidies to key costs or inputs advocating cost reduction technologies to establish consistently competitive farm gate prices and acceptable margins. Three, to stimulate increased production levels both in quantity and range of produce to allow for affordable consumer prices, provision of goods and services, enhance inputs or subsidies. Four, to foster a clear and sustainable developmental change with respect to the use of new and appropriate technology, environmental preservation and conservation practices, food, health and safety practices, innovation. What are the eligibility criteria for the EIP? Applicants must be registered with the MALF or the Tobago House of Assembly. Applicants can be individuals, cooperatives, or other forms of business entities. Their fishing, their fishing vessel must be registered with the Ministry of Agriculture, Land and Fisheries or the Tobago House of Assembly. They must show proof of interest in land. These are considered to be your deed, your lease, your land tax receipt, and proof of original receipt for the goods and services that was purchased. What is the procedure for applying for AIP? Applicants shall provide identification, national identification or passport, farmer's identification. They must bring copies of all documents to the county office of which they reside. It is important to note that applications are done where the person resides and not where the parcel of land is located. Proof of interest in land documents, proof of interest on other property documents. What are the requirements for registration as a farmer? Applicants must be a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. They must be 17 years or older. They must be in possession of a valid electoral ID card or passport or naturalization certificate. They must be farming at least one lot of land and able to show proof of interest in the land being farmed. 
what are the requirements for registration as a farmer? Applicants without secure tenure and who satisfy the following criteria shall be considered for registration to access incentives. Occupants whose land tenure documents are being processed, example, leases, transfers, conveyances, and cabinet approval. Occupants who have been in occupation of agricultural state lands for more than five years and show acceptable level of cultivation. What is the application process? So, firstly, persons must complete the application form at the relevant county office and submit all supporting documents. The clerk verifies the applicant meets the general and the specific eligibility criteria. The application is then passed to the field staff for field investigation. The person conducting the field investigation is usually the, the agricultural extension officer. So the field officer receives the application, completes the field investigation, computes the incentive, recommends the payment, and submits applications to the supervising officer for review. Then the supervising officer, usually the agricultural extension officer three, reviews the application, including the calculations. He or she may or may not conduct field visits based on the type of application that is being processed and submits to the county officer. The county officer reviews and endorses recommendations for payments made by the investigating officer. Field visits may be done. This application is then submitted to the head of division for approval. The head of division is usually the director of the regions, either North region or South region. The head of division approves recommendations to pay field visits may be, may be made. Applications, is, applications may be submitted to, the, is submitted, sorry, to the administration for accounting procedures. Administration commences accounting procedures to execute payments and forwards the application with the documents to accounts head office for preparation of checks. And finally, the accounting department rechecks, verifies, and completes the process. Checks are prepared and sent to the region for disbursement. And at this point, I would like to reiterate that incentives are not automatic. Persons must qualify for each incentive before they can be given a rebate or be subsidized. And I really can't stress this. I really want to stress this further because there's a school of thought that once I make an application, I will receive an incentive. And that is not how it operates and that is not how it is done. So that takes us to disqualification because incentives can be disqualified. Disqualification shall be on the basis of unfair practice until otherwise proven by the applicant. Non-conformity to general and specific eligibility criteria. Applicants on illegal occupation of land. Applicants on state lands who have been in unauthorized occupancy for less than five years. Applicants occupying lands not approved for agriculture. Applicants occupying government agriculture stations. Applicants occupying lands designated as reserves. Applicants occupying lands for which permissions has been denied. Disqualification can also be for bills and receipts that have been submitted more than one year from the date of application. Procedures for complaints. So we make an, we make an application and we were told that our application has been disqualified. Um, the term that we use at the Ministry of Agriculture is DNQ, but it simply means is it did not qualify. So um, a farmer may feel that they were treated unfairly and that I think I should have been paid my incentive. Essentially, they think that they should have been paid and they would like a review. So we move on to the procedures for complaints. How shall I complain? 
how shall I let my voice be heard that I'm, I'm dissatisfied with the disqualification of my application. Complaints shall be made to the agricultural officer one at the county where the application was made. If it's unresolved, meaning if the farmer is not satisfied with the result from the county office, then he or she can move their, their complaint forward to the agricultural officer two extension at the regional office, whether it's a regional office south or the regional office north. The agricultural officer two would engage the directorate, both the deputy director and the director of regions north or south in arriving at a decision. If that decision is unresolved, meaning that the farmer is still not satisfied with the decision that is made by the directorate of the regions, he can lodge a complaint that would be forwarded to the AIP Advisory Committee. Now, the AIP Advisory Committee is a final arbiter of complaints. The AIP Committee is headed by the Chief Technical Officer and numerous persons that are involved in the process of the agricultural incentive program. That process takes approximately six months because at each stage it would take some time for the matter to be investigated. Let's move on to what are the elements of the EIP. So the elements of the EIP are as follows. Vehicles for agriculture or fisheries, machinery and equipment, water for agriculture, soil conservation, land preparation or land clearing, the crop subsector, the livestock subsector, apiculture subsector, the fishery subsector, poor service operations and marketing, youth in agriculture, security for agriculture, agro-processing and soil amelioration. Let's deal with one of the most favorite and maybe the most active for want of a better word, incentive that is accessed by our farmers, the vehicle incentive. What is the vehicle incentive? The vehicle incentive is 20% of the purchase price up to a maximum. And we'll discuss further what maximum we are referring to. This is access, vehicle incentives are generally accessed once every five years per farmer. It is usually paid in three tranches, and we'll discuss further what maximum we are referring to. Vehicles require a certificate of roadworthiness from the Transport Commissioner and a valuation certificate from the Transport Commissioner. All right, um, let me also take this time to talk about VAT exemptions. So um, there's a VAT exemption that can be accessed together with the vehicle incentives. Persons must be able to qualify for the VAT, for the vehicle incentive to be able to qualify for the VAT, the VAT, um, the VAT relief, right? Um, it is, it is advised that persons looking to apply for the VAT exemption that they, upon receiving the quotation from whichever um, entity or dealership that they choose to purchase their vehicle from, that as soon as you obtain the quotation, that you go to the county offices, and there are eight county offices in Trinidad and Tobago, in Trinidad, visit your county office and make an application. VAT exemptions is ideally before the purchase of the vehicle. And I would like to stress it even further. The VAT exemption is supposed to be given before the purchase of the vehicle. That's the reason why we ask for a quotation so that the VAT can be assessed before the purchase of the vehicle. VAT exemptions are usually given every four years. Farmers are entitled to a VAT exemption every four years. However, it is wise to note that vehicle incentives are assessed every five years. Okay, so how are the vehicle incentives, how are the rebates um, 
incentivize, right? So we have new four wheel drive pickups or light good vehicles with MGWs that are less than 29.50 to a maximum of 40,000. Used four wheel drives, pickups like this vehicle with MGW less than 29.50 to a maximum of 30,000. New two wheel drive pickups like this vehicle with MGW less than 29.50 to a maximum of 25,000. Used two wheel drive pickups or light goods vehicle MGW less than 29.50, 20,000. New trucks MGW greater than 29.50, 60,000. Used trucks MGW greater than 29.50, 40,000. Now, I would like farmers, our new farmers, our budding farmers essentially, because our existing farmers are aware that it's important to note the MGW of the, the light good vehicle and the trucks for which you are purchasing. Vehicle incentives are specific. We have specific eligibility criteria for vehicle incentives and MGW is very important. Farmers purchasing vehicles outside of the remit of less than 2950 MGWs greater than 2950 MGWs may pose challenges in accessing the incentive program for the vehicle incentive. So I would advise farmers to pay attention to the MGW that you are for the vehicle which you are purchasing because you may not be able to qualify if the MGW is greater than 2950 for a light good vehicle because the special eligibility criteria for that incentive would definitely be less cultivation than those for MGWs greater than 2950. And that is very important to note. Right? So let's move on vehicles for agriculture again. New wheel tractors to a maximum of 50,000. The difference with the wheel tractor incentive and the vehicle light goods vehicle and trucks incentive is that wheel tractor incentives are paid in one lump sum, whereas the light goods vehicle and pickups and the trucks are paid in three tranches, right? So let's go again. The used wheel tractors are a maximum up to 29,000. 25,000, sorry. Combined harvesters for greens, 200,000. All-terrain vehicles, 25% up to a maximum of 10,000. Now, at this point, I'd also like to make a note that not everyone would be able to access all-terrain vehicles. And again, I wanna stress that because as the name suggests, all-terrain, it's all about the terrain. So all-terrain vehicles are essentially accessed by those farmers who are on hillside. They are the ones that would mostly qualify for this type of incentive. A farmer, because that's, as the name suggests, that's what it is. Um, and I, I, I'm using this time also to stress that farmers must qualify for the incentive to be able to access the incentive. It's not that I'm a farmer, so I have access to all of the incentives. That's not what it is you must be able to show that the enterprise description to which you are engaged in, the machinery, the equipment, or whatever it is that you're going to use on your farm is adequate for that enterprise, or else you would not qualify for the incentive. You must be able to show this machinery, this equipment, this vehicle, whatever it is, whichever element of the EIP program that you, it is essential for your enterprise. So with that said, let's move on again. Do we have any questions? No? Okay. So let's go again. So, program that you, so <laughs> insulation and refrigeration of pickups uh, up to a maximum of 25%. Um, 
$6,000 insulation and refrigeration of light goods vehicle, again, 25% up to a maximum of 20,000. Insulation and refrigeration of trucks, 25% up to a maximum of 30,000. Then we move on to machinery and equipment. Machinery and equipment is 50% of the purchase price, a maximum of 50,000 per year. Trailers also fall under machinery and equipment, and that is 50% a maximum of $4,000. Next, we have water for agriculture. So the specific eligibility criteria is free inspection of site for accessing incentive of ponds, wells, and dams. So let me explain that. I'm a farmer. It's dry season, and I would not be able to have a regular supply of water to be able to water my crops. So I would decide I would like to build a pond. That's good, right? All well and good. However, it is important to note that for pond incentives, you need to inform the Minister of Agriculture before the construction of the pond because we need to make some site visits to give the farmer the information that he needs in terms of um, if the site or the location that he choose to put the pond, if it's if it would um, be the best site, um, give information in terms of the type of soil, if it's if the pond would be the the pond that is going to be dug will be able to hold the water and things like that. So the pond incentive is one of those incentives that takes a longer time because we advise those farmers to come into the Ministry of Agriculture and let us know that you're about to dig this pond and we can have a discussion about it. OK, so let's move on. Water pumps, 1.5 horsepower and above. Right. Um, some might say, OK, so what if if I'm in a hydroponic system? What if I have a hydroponic system? A, a pump, a water pump with 1.5 horsepower is is much more than I would need for a hydroponic system. So they have pumps that are of way less horsepower. Right. And so what you're saying, Miss Williams, is that I can't access the incentive for my um, my pump, my pumps that are less than 1.5 horsepower because I have a hydroponic system and that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that for each system. It's going to be different and we know that hydroponics is one of those emerging new technology, not so new, but I'll just for, for the school of thought we say one of those um, is moving in the new technology um, framework where we have vertical planting, right? And a lot of farmers are, are being more and more engaged in vertical planting because it you can produce more with a less amount of space, right? No problem. So yes, these pumps will be able to qualify for the incentive. OK, so let's move on. Do we have any questions? No questions. So I'm doing a very great job today, guys, because we have no questions. Everybody's understanding everything I'm seeing. Again, with water for agriculture, pond establishment. So we have pond establishment is actually 75% up to a maximum of 24,000. Wells and dams up to 30,000. Water pumps, a maximum of 20,000. Irrigation equipment and watering systems. 40,000. Soil conservation. Contour drains 13 centimeters by 40 centimeters, $150 per 30 meters. Storm drains 40 centimeters by 40 centimeter, $175 per 30 meter. Contour banking and contour ridging $1,000 per hectare. Contour barriers $75 per 30 meters. Terrace outlets, $120 per 30 meters. Check dams, 50% up to a maximum of $200. Land preparation and land clearing. Again, we are addressing the specific eligibility criteria. Plowing and rotivating are once per year. You can only apply for that incentive for plowing and rotivating once per year. Land clearing is once per claimant per parcel. The school of thought is once we clear our land, we are actively involved in agriculture and therefore we are not going to clear the same piece of land twice. 
that's the school of thought. Now, someone might ask again, so, Miss Williams, I have a 10 acre parcel of land and I have only cleared five acres this year. This year I cleared five acres, Miss Williams, and next year I intend to clear another five acres. But you're saying to me, land clearing is once per claimant per parcel. Do I access the incentive for my other five acres of land. The incentive is land clearing is once per claimant per parcel. Okay. So the minimum hectare to qualify for an incentive is 0.4 hectares, not any incentive, but the land clearing incentive and the land preparation incentive is 0.4 hectares. So if a farmer is rotibating, plowing, banking, um, land clearing less than 0.4 hectares, he cannot access the land preparation or land clearing incentive. So for plowing, rotibating, banking, it's 25% up to a maximum of 500 per hectare, land clearing 2,000 per hectare. The, the crop subsector, so the crop subsector is usually comprised of citrus, cocoa and coffee, coconuts and rice. So citrus, the, speci the specific eligibility criteria for citrus is farmers must be engaged in or a minimum of 0.4 hectares for new orchards, a minimum of 0.4 hectares for rehabilitated orchards and labor costs are not included. Generally, labor cost is not included in any of the incentives. So, for example, um, the digging of the ponds, labor cost is not included. For constructions, it is not included. Um, so, that is also something to note. Labor costs are not included in any of the incentives. Okay, so the establishment of new citrus orchards are uh, to a maximum of 6,000 per hectare, Rehab rehabilitation of citrus orchards, 4,000 per hectare. Cocoa, so the specific eligibility criteria for cocoa is a minimum of one hectare for new fields, a minimum of one hectare for rehabilitated fields, and again, labor cost is not included. Fermentaries must meet the spe specifications of the cocoa and coffee industry board. Do we have any questions? Please. So let's take our first question. Read it now. Are only local purchases qualified for these discounts? No. So the question is, are only local invoices qualified for incentives? The answer that, to that question is no. Right? Farmers are required to provide the exchange rates from the central bank along with the invoice the invoice for the online purchases. So persons can purchase items um, online, but you have to ensure that when you apply for the incentive, you bring the exchange rates on the day of that the item was purchased, but from the central bank along with the invoice. Okay, any other question? Okay, so let's move on. Again, we, we talk in cook, right with cocoa so the price support for cocoa is 19 dollars the price support for coffee is 12 dollars establishment of new cocoa and coffee fields 6,000 per hectare the rehabilitation of cocoa and coffee fields 4,000 per hectare the establishment of new cocoa fermentaries ten thousand dollars right now we move to coconut and we all, all Trinidadians, well, maybe most Trinidadians, we all love a coconut, right? So the specific eligibility criteria, a minimum of one hectare for new fields, minimum of one hectare for rehabilitated fields, and of course the labor costs are not included. Um, so when we say, when we give these values of a minimum of one hectare, minimum of point, 0.4 hectares, what we're, what we're essentially saying is that farmers must have 
a new field that is approximately one hectare to be able to qualify for the incentives. You must uh, would have at least um, established a new field of one hectare. You must would have established a new field of point for hectares. You must would have rehabilitated a field of one hectare. Again with coconut, the establishment of new coconut fields to 6,000 per hectare, the rehabilitation of coconut fields of 4,000 per hectare. Rice. With rice, we have a guaranteed price of $2.99 per kilogram for grade one paddy, $2.86 per kilogram for grade two paddy, $2.09 per kilogram for grade three paddy, $2.99 cents per kilogram for rice seed. Do we have any questions? Not no more as yet. The livestock, the livestock subsector. Cattle or buffalo. The establishment of pastures 60% up to a maximum of 6,000 per hectare. Pre-approved housing and infrastructure 50% up to a maximum of 30,000. The milking system of bulk tank. Um, the purchase of the system or the, the building of the system, 50,000 every 10 years, and the price um, for milk is $1.50 per kilogram. Goat and sheep, establishment of pastures, 50% up to a maximum of 6,000 per hectare, approved imported semen and embryo, 20,000 per year, importation of improved breeding stock, 2,500 Per animal, per animal, 15 animals per year. The 15 animals per year is the maximum number that you can have per year. Right? Pre-approved housing and infrastructure, 50% up to a maximum of 30,000. It is also, um, let me pause a while and, and say that is also recommended that before the construction of pens, for, but it's pig, buffalo, um, goats and sheep, rabbit, that you um, contact the county office before the construction of these um, buildings as well. Okay, um, it's also important to know that person should also check the deed or at least to ensure that the construction of these um, buildings fall under the remit of the There are some leases that are specific for crop production and there are some leases that are specific for agriculture production. Um, if your lease does not um, stipulate that you can have livestock production on that piece of land, you would not qualify for the incentive. Okay, so let's move on. Pigs, pre-approved housing and infrastructure, 50% up to a maximum of 30,000, the importation of improved breeding stock, 2,500 per animal, and again, 15 animals per year. Poultry, we have pre-approved housing and infrastructure, 30% up to a maximum of 75,000. Rabbits, establishment of rabbitaries, 50% up to a maximum of 15,000. Establishment of approved humane slaughtering facilities, 50% a maximum of 24,000. Waste management, biodigesters, 10,000 per year. So poor service operations. These incentives are aimed at increasing the value of farmers' output along the value chain. And again, I would like um, to note that post um, Poor service and the agro-processing incentive cannot be claimed at the same time. So it's either you claim under poor service or you claim under agro-processing. You can't, um, farmers are not able to claim both at the same time for the same um, equipment or machinery or packaging material or what or um, crates or whatever it is that um, item you purchase for that purpose. All right, establishment of post service facilities 40% of the maximum of 10,000 per holding, cost of packaging 50%, 4,000 per year, 
approved poor service equipment, 50%, 30,000 per hectare, neutral facilities, 30% up to 30,000, HACCP upgrading, 40% up to 4,000. Right, we move on to agro-processing. Agro-processing really aims at assisting in the development and expansion of agribusiness, right? Um, as we spoke earlier, one of the aim of the AIP is to increase um, agribusiness expansion and development in Trinidad and Tobago. So the establishment of approved facilities for agro-processing is 50,000 per year. The cost of refurbishing of approved facilities for agro-processing 20,000 per year, the cost of packaging materials, 15,000 per year, has of upgrading, 40,000 per year. The youth incentive, youth and agriculture incentive. There, um, the specific eligibility criteria, persons must be under 40 years of age. They must provide proof of relevant training of not less than six months in agriculture. And here I give a few examples. For example, the Youth Apprenticeship Program in Agriculture, YAPA. That was one of the initiatives of the ministry. Um, we had it a few years prior. Um, persons attending the Eastern Caribbean Institute of Agriculture and Forestry. Some of us know it as ECIAF. Of course, um, the University of the West Indies um, degrees um, obtained at the Univers University of the West Indies. There was one time um, someone asked me, Miss Williams, um, what if I do the training that is offered by the extension training information system division, ETIS? They offer free training every month, right? What if I attend um, some of those sessions or what if I attended sessions for six months, would I be able to be to, satis to satisfactorily qualify or be deemed um, a relevant training to um, access the youth and agriculture incentive? Once persons can show adequate training for more than six months in agriculture, they will be able to access the youth and incentive program. And of course, we work with farmers. So you can visit your county office and they would be able to better guide you in terms of, okay, maybe you need to do this training or that training and that would be able to better um, assist you in qualifying for the youth in, the youth in agriculture incentive. Remember the Ministry of Agriculture, our aim is to move persons from point A to, well, let's say maybe point Z to point B and then to point A rather than say point A to point B because it would suggest that we're moving down rather than we, we're moving up. So our aim and the aim of the incentive is to move farmers. We want to move farmers from where they were before and get them to a place where we can, of course, create a food sustainable economy, right? So let's move on. With that said, let's move on. The youth in, in agriculture is paid in two tranches. So though someone might qualify or they may qualify or they qualify for the incentive is paid in two tranches, just like vehicle incentives are paid in three tranches. It's paid in two tranches. OK, so it's calculated based on the startup production cost a maximum of 30,000. Do we have any questions? So everybody is understanding everything i'm saying that's great so let's move on to security in agriculture security in agriculture so with the the change in dynamics of of the world not just trying to be go um you know we have a lot of pretty larceny and it's one of the major challenges in agriculture at this present point in time farmers face a lot of losses due to pretty larceny so at the Ministry of Agriculture, we have an incentive for security in agriculture. It's primarily to um, reduce the theft of agricultural commodities, right? Um, so it's approved system against predilasni, 50% up to a maximum of 30,000 per holding. Um, some might ask what is considered to be an approved system against predilasni? So we have we would have in the past um, incentivized um, commerce systems. There are farmers who would have um, 
place cameras on their property and we would have incentivized those accordingly. There are other farmers who would have fenced their farmland and that incentive is 50% up to a maximum of 25,000 per holding. It is important to note that the fencing incentive is accessed once per claimant because the school of thought is when I, fa when I fence my parcel, I fence the entire parameter of my parcel and therefore I'm not going to fence my parcel and refence my parcel. It's a one-time incentive. Okay. I hope everyone is taking notes. So soil amelioration, the specific eligibility criteria, applications for the incentive must be accompanied by an approved soil test and recommendation. The recommendation report detailing the limestone requirements should be submitted to and alongside with the the uh, the invoices for that application. This incentive specifically um, would only be paid, and that's why it's noted here, once it's accompanied with the soil test, right? Because, it's, because the soil test would be able to say how much you need to apply, when you need to apply it, etc. right? This incentive can be accessed every three years. Right, the purchase and the application of limestone 50% up to a maximum of $1,500 per hectare. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the end of our presentation. I hope that it was everything that was discussed here was clear and concise and precise so that, um, well, I, I'm not seeing any more questions. So I I am going I'm going to go with the um the impression that everyone was who is tuned in this morning is um everything was clear and understandable and I did a very great job. Yes, okay. <laughs> right? And I did a very good job. So I would like to thank everyone for listening to everything. Um, that I had to say this morning, that our team, it's not just me here, Miss Florentia Beckers Gangaram, Mrs. Florentia Beckers Gangaram is also here with me. Keisha Robinson is here. Our director, Mr. Hansi Dubal, is also here with me. And we thank you on behalf of this, the Ministry of Agriculture for tuning in today with us. Um, do we have any other questions? No more questions at this time. But so they would come in so we would wait um, to see if we have any other questions. That is, oops, that is going to um, come up at this time. Any other questions? The lighting is a bit hard. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? No more questions. No more questions. Excellent presentation. Yes, it was. <laughs> we have one new question. Oh, so we have a new question. Why a farmer's badge is taking so long? Okay, so our question is, I'm, I'm not sure if you all heard Mrs. Gangaram, why a farmer's badge taking so long? So just like incentives, there's a process with the FRP, what we call, that's called the Farmers Registration Program. We we have an, we have a, um, we call it the, the FRP, just like we say the AIP. So it's all a process. What we tell farmers is that a field investigation must be done before a farmer's badge can be um, given out, for want of a better word, right? Or um, so 
a farmer makes an application, an FRP application, he wants to be registered. We take the application, just like as, as it would have been shown in the EIP, the, the process for is, is almost identical because a field, a field visit must be done. So we register and the clerk takes the application, the application is passed to the agricultural extension officer. The extension officer takes the application, visits the farmer. Visits the farmer, makes the field visits, okay, the farmer qualifies for the um, farmer's card. The application is returned to the county. The um, agricultural extension of tree yes. revisits the application, just like with the EIP. The application then goes to the agricultural officer one. Yes. And then the the it is now recommended and it goes to the regional office for signature. It's a process. It's not something that is going to, and and something that I need to also note here is the extension officers are the same officers that are responsible for FRP, AIP flood reports, right? And and they are the ones, they are our PSAP. So let me commend the agricultural extension officers for the great job that they are doing in the Ministry of Agriculture because they are our frontline workers. They are the ones that's doing the, the great work that they're doing, right? They are the ones that's out there. Now, for example, especially with, with the weather that we're having recently, we have a lot of flooding taking place. Those extension, extension officers are going to deal with the natural disaster before they will deal with the FRP or the AIP. And that's why we say it's a process. So the place is flooded out, as we see in the Trinidad, in the Trinidad vernacular, there's a flood and the extension officers would deal with flood first before so those incentive applications and those frp applications would not be put on hold for the disaster that occurred the flood will take precedence over the frp and the eip so i would like to take the opportunity to ask farmers you know you can call the county office you can call the county office and inquire about the card and they will give you the information. So, so those things tend to sometimes um, create lags in the system. And I, I really don't like to say lags because it's really not something that we have control over. It's just, it's, it's just something that happens along the way sometimes. Do we have any other questions? Um. The same person would have asked, they, said they would have responded saying that they applied and paid one year now. Paid? But, um, somehow or the other, I think we need to reiterate that farmer registration is a free service. It's something that um, the ministry um, pays for in terms of us paying staff and everybody to issue a card to you so that we would know that you are in production and that you are capable of accessing the agricultural incentives. But um, there's a, a be to register as a vendor. So possibly the, the person who is asking the questions would have applied as a vendor, a vendor to register as a vendor. And in that case, it's a $10 fee that's paid at the um, Inland Revenue mm -hmm. Office. The fastest way to get feedback in terms of where your registration is at is to contact the county office. So whichever office you would have applied to, call that office, the office that you went in and made the application and find out what's the status of it because that's usually a very, a, a process that would take like three weeks. Yeah. So maybe the card is there and we are unable to get in touch with you to collect. Then I, I hope you, that person was able to hear Ms. Gangram. Can you indicate us if you heard a response or not? Well, we'll respond to the comments online too, so the information will be there, so they would be able to note it. Okay, so we would also respond respond to that comment online, so that if oh, okay, so you heard Miss Gang, so that was Mrs. Gangaram responding to your comment. Do we have any other questions? So again, we wait, we wait a little bit to 
see if yeah. we have any more questions. Um, and if people look at the live after we are finished, they're still free to put in comments or ask questions in the comment section based on what's contained in the live and we respond to it in a, a timely manner as we possibly as we can. can. Yes. You know, um, the AIP is, we're always getting a lot of questions about AIP and um, how the process works, how, um, why didn't I qualify for this? Why didn't I qualify for that? And um, I hope, I really do hope that this session was very informative in clearing up a lot of the, um, the misunderstandings. Yes, Ms. Williams, it was excellent. I think you would have covered most of what the general criteria is for and, and the specific eligibility criteria too. But should anybody want additional information about anything that would have been presented today or to follow up or to become registered, they are free to contact the Ministry of Agriculture County office in the respective areas where they live and to, to know where exactly to um, you should go to register. You can look at the ministry's website agriculture.gov.tt and you are advised to go to the office where in the area that you live to get registered. Um, before you actually go to the office, you can give them a call. Most offices have contact information listed on the ministry's website too. So feel free to call and find out what you have to work with and what exactly you need to do. Be prepared to be registered first and then to come in and access all our agricultural incentives. Question. Nothing came in as yet, so maybe it's a good time. Okay, so it doesn't seem as though we have any other questions. We were waiting to see if we had any other questions, but there are no other questions. So again, we would like to thank everyone for tuning in with us this morning um, for the presentation on the Agricultural Incentive Program. Um, one more thing to, to reiterate before we leave, before we leave, um, is concerning the vehicle incentive. So, is mindful to note that the vehicle incentive, the ministry subsidizes vehicles that are conducive to agriculture production. We do not, um, we do not encourage the the farmers, and to um, apply for incentives on vehicles that are not conducive to agriculture production. Um, we incentivize vehicles that are conducive to agricultural production. Okay, vehicles that are essential for agricultural production and it fits the enterprise description. So with that school of thought, we thank you all again for tuning in with us today. There are no more questions. You have a good day and thank you.